Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo, we're here at the South Park Center. I'm delighted to be joined with Dylan with his fantastic feature film, Puro. Let's take a look at the clip. Well, it sounds to me like you're presenting mentally with OCD. So what does that mean? All of us need the help of other people. I love you. Love yourself, bro. Nobody else can do that. In this community, we help save each other. I have to filter out every thought that passes through my head right now. Every choice you make is a step toward fear or love. Um, Dylan, thank you so much for coming to New Filmmakers. Welcome to the New Filmmakers LA family. And thank you so much on so many levels for bringing Pure O. Not only was it just a, a wonderful cinematic masterpiece experience, it's also mm -hmm. a very important film with some amazing morals. So thank you so much, really. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having us. This has been an amazing experience through and through. This whole festival has been amazing. Oh, it's good to hear. But um, for those that haven't seen your film, tell us, tell us a little about it. Sure, so the film is semi-autobiographical. It's based on my life. I was diagnosed with OCD going into my 30s, late onset. Um, and so the film is sort of revolves around my life at that time. Um, I was working in a rehab in Malibu and I was, uh, had just gone through a recent engagement and so it sort of follows this guy in Los Angeles going into his 30s, grappling with a mental health diagnosis, having never dealt with mental health issues in his life before, mm -hmm. um, kind of following him and the people around him as well in his life and um, that's sort of the the crux of the film. Yeah. Well, firstly, thank you for sharing something that's so personal. I always think when we get storytellers that share something that's so personal to them and make it universal, not only you're ed entertaining, but you're educating and, and sure. helping others that have been through it. I'm also really happy, as I said last night at the festival, I'm happy you made a film about not only, obviously it's hard, hard for you for your experience, but OCD, I feel like it's one of those words that's just kind of flown out there. Sure. And people don't, kind of can say it, but maybe don't really know the true diagnosis mm. of what that is but also how hard it is as well if you truly do have that and you've been sure. diagnosed or even if you've not been diagnosed but you don't know you have it yeah um was that some i mean you know for you personally it's a personal story and this was a particular um you know on the particular sort of strand of ocd as mm. well but what did you kind of want to how did you know how to orchestrate that into a story because you were also very fair on not just what you have, but what many people others go through in mental health spectrum as well. Sure, I think that was the magic trick of it. Obviously, it's an invisible illness and it's in one's head. So thinking about film as a cinematic medium and figuring out how to show that visually, um, that was sort of the magic trick. I knew that I really wanted to make it grounded and naturalistic because I did th really felt that people did not understand this as well. I didn't understand it myself going through it. So I felt that the only way to really um, to not use any tricks or anything, to try to just ground it in as much of naturalism as possible would really allow the audience to sort of like be with the main character as he understood this diagnosis and was getting diagnosed and going through the film. Mm. So, um, so that's what I did from the outset and I th it really comes down to acting, comes down to writing, really comes down to all of like just the, the sort of like primary colors of cinema. Yeah. And so yeah. I knew that I just needed to cast fantastic actors and really, um, just really mine fantastic performances and really focus on that and um, keep the camera very naturalistic and sort of a cinema verite approach to the filmmaking. Yeah. Uh, and so that was the approach to the film. Yeah, I really love uh, how you shot it. It felt like very personal, like, you know, mm. we were kind of very much, I felt like I was in the circle at times, you know, yeah. in, in the room uh, going through that experience. Um, your actors, you know, they really were incredible. I mean, you know, everybody had, I think you, you were also very generous too, because I always think it's nice when you give actors just a really good dialogues, you know, really good meaty roles that they can get into the depth of. And everyone, even the supporting characters, they all got a yeah. chance to shine. Yep. Um, how did you go about like, you know, writing this? What was that process for you? Um, well, you spoke to it a little bit earlier. I think that um, I really deal with universal themes in my films and filmmaking, and I'm a big believer in that. And I think that the way you get there is by specificity yeah and um, I really wanted to challenge myself to write something very personal and to be vulnerable that's mm -hmm. sort of um, that's sort of the, the theme of the film in general is vulnerability being this greatest form of courage and um, I wanted to sort of be a harbinger for that in the writing process yeah so yeah I wrote it not even knowing really if I was gonna make it I wanted to write it for myself mm. uh, and during that process I just 
I could feel it as I was writing and it was sort of coming to life and I could um, see that through my own willingness to sort of mind myself that I just think that as specific as we all think that our experiences are is that as specific as one one of us thinks that something we've gone through there's always somebody out there that's had a similar experience or if not that they know the emotions behind it right yeah correct so yeah. especially anxiety and depression and mental health these things that are that we're talking about in the film if even if somebody hasn't dealt with that that everybody knows somebody has a family member a friend so i wanted to make that too, you know, I wanted yeah. to show everybody around the main character and show not just mental health and how it affects the sufferer, but also how it affects everybody around them and their yeah. family members and their friends. And so I wanted to, people to be able to take that away from the film, even if they didn't have any exper any firsthand experience with mental health. Oh, you certainly did that. Trust me. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your actors, because oh yeah. my goodness, didn't they carry the film? I mean, yeah. they all. Goodness me, from your leads to your, you know, leads partner to all the other p people that were involved in the film. Yeah. How do you, how, what was, how do you go about casting this? And also, just as well, I think you also mixed as well with some people that hadn't acted before as well. I did, yeah. Uh, I mixed in actors and non-actors yeah. again, going for naturalism and believability. I think that when you mix in non-actors with trained actors, that that really allows the audience to not really under to know where the acting's starting. And I wanted to have a docu feel style mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, the film. Mm -hmm. um, but no, acting is incredibly important. We were a small budget film, and I think that writing and acting are the lifeblood of cinema, and that the audience will forgive everything else. They'll forgive the frame, they'll forgive the look, they'll forgive a lot of things, but truly, if you can deliver on performance and writing, that is that is the crux of story in my, my personal yes, opinion. Yes, correct. So I knew that that's one thing that I could control. You know, I come from an acting background. I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, like yourself. We went together, yeah. Yeah. So um, luckily being an actor myself, being from LA, being a working actor for over 20 years in this town, I'm lucky that I have an incre incredible group of talented friends that mm -hmm. I've picked up through the years and that I know. And so through the writing process, I was already thinking of that. I was sort of thinking of people in mind and, mm. um, and I didn't have a casting agent. I casted the film myself. Good job. Uh, thank you. So I, I was very, very fortunate that everybody I called said yes to me. Everybody came out. Everybody knew that it was a personal story and sort of took that on and really um, carried the responsibility of that, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that from the, the word go, Daniel Dore, the lead of the film, who yeah, was so sort good. of, I look at the lead of the film being the head of that department, right? We yeah. think about film in the five departments. I think about the acting, and the acting is its own department. Oh, wow, that's and, so clever. And yeah. whoever's leading that film is leading the charge. And, yeah. And I think that um, they set the tone. Mm -hmm. And so I knew Daniel, and I knew him socially, and knew him a little bit in school, and I knew that he would be right, and we t had some conversations, and uh, I knew that he would set the tone, and he did, and we, we did some, um, I won't give anything away, but there's a climatic scene in the film that we shot very early on in the first week of filming, and um, I really challenged him for that, because I wanted the, I think the crew really reacts to that. I think that when you do something early on and you really deliver something, it sort of ups the stakes for everybody. And they're like, oh, we're making that movie, you know? And it really yeah. ups everybody's game a little bit on set. So I, I did that intentionally. I thought that he brought it in spades. Uh, again, mixing in non-actors with that as well to let them yeah. react and play off of that created a great, especially with a story like this, right? I yeah, wanted to sure. cast real life sufferers, real life uh, people who work in rehabs. And so I wanted them to be a resource on set for the actors as well. Mm -hmm. And um, no, I can't say enough about my actors. I thought that they really delivered in spades. It was fantastic. And and how how how? Because obviously, again, it's I mean, it's nice that people carried the weight of the fact the film because obviously it's based on a personal experiences, a personal story. But uh, how do you, how do you enjoy working with your actors as a director? I mean, you come from an acting background, sure. so you're on the other side now. Like, what how, what's your kind of process? I love it. I think that you know, I didn't go to film school. You know, I'm a, I come from a writing background, and a, um, I make music and drama school and. Um, I think that that's my strength as a director, is working with actors. I understand yeah. the actor's psyche. Um, I understand that the writing is paramount, and that once you did that, I think it was big for me on this film in particular because it was such a personal story, but um, I wasn't interested in telling my story, sort of, so yeah. to speak. I wanted to mine that for specificity, like we were talking about, mm -hmm. to create a universal idea, mm -hmm. but uh, I intentionally casted a real-life couple as the leads as well. They're both trained actors, but they're a real-life couple. Um, the, the people who play her parents are a real life couple who oh, are older. Wow. I did all of that intentionally as well. I love it. Um, so that I could really hand the film over to my actors. Once yeah. we started the process, I really talked to them a lot about that, about um, obviously there needs to be a separation between yourself and the character you're playing, mm -hmm. but I really wanted to skirt that line 
Yeah. You know, and that's 100%. what we were going for, that sort of docu-realism, natural thing I keep speaking to. Yeah. So, you know, we'd bring in pieces from the real life couples from their apartment into the apartment set. And so I asked them to really think about it and feel for them as the actors, what do you, how much do you, how much of yourself are you willing to bring as Daniel? Mm -hmm. And then what do you need for that separation to be Cooper? And yeah. let's find that line together, you know, and I obviously want to push you as far as you're willing to go, mm -hmm. you know, whether the characters are fighting, whether they're talking and, you know, and sweetness and sweet nothings to each other. It's sort of like, this is what's in the script, but like, how do you guys talk? How do you argue? What are your, what are your pet names? What are your things? And yeah. sort of figure out what's the boundary for you guys. And they mm -hmm. sort of, we worked on that together and mm -hmm. um, did that throughout the film. And I just think that that process also brought like a wealth of richness to the performances. Absolutely, and I think you you know you came into the fact that you know if you've got a good story and good performance, it really is is half the battle. I mean, sure. I, I it's, it's not very it's, you know it's quite rare. I didn't want to miss a moment or a beat or a, you know a, a word because I was mm. captivated by everything you took us through, everything the actors took us through, mm. uh, everything the story took us through, and you know I love how you really have made this universal. And I think one of the things we were talking mm. about at the festival last night was just you know you wanted to sort of bring people together and and encourage people that you're okay the way that you are and what you're going through sure. your mental health spectrum but also you're not alone mm -hmm. and you know and I think I think the audience even felt that last night they were all just like oh, you know what I'm not alone here in this crazy world that we live yeah. in what did you want universally for your audience to take from your film well that you know really I mean throughout this theatrical run through South by Southwest and our theatrical run here in LA and all these these festivals is um, the outpouring of in-person catharsis that has occurred is, I don't even think I was really aware of it, I'm being honest, Danny. Yeah. I was just sort of like, when you're making a film, you're just, your head's down, you got a million decisions, you're on set, you're directing, like every million people have questions for you every two seconds. You're just, your head is down, you're just in it, making it. Um, and it really wasn't until later in the process that I, I, I truly realized the effect that this could have for a lot of people. And yeah. the outpouring of, you know, people specifically within this, it's so mis, uh, diagnosed and misunderstood even within the therapeutic community that mm -hmm. you know we've had people raise their hand during Q and A's and realize that they have have this yeah you know and mm -hmm. um, and and have been able to come up and get help from a therapist on a Q and A panel and yeah. get into therapy and you know yeah. parents that have had their children that have been diagnosed and they're there and they're finally like you know overwhelmed with emotion and saying they finally understand what their children are going through mm -hmm. and they're able to see it. You know, film is so powerful. Cinema is so powerful. It is. Um, I, I always say it. It's all of the arts combined, right? You have mm -hmm. you have images and sound and music and actors and flesh and blood. You have all of this sort of creating this experience, and it's so immersive for an audience that you get so much more out of it than reading a book ab yeah. about OCD or you know watching a program. To be able to watch a, a story and watch a human journey mm -hmm. uh, has been so powerful for so many people and. Um, it's absolutely the thing that I'm the most proud of with yeah. the film is not that it's my story or something, but just the fact that so many other people who have this are feeling yeah. seen and heard and feeling inspired to go out. And, and, yeah. and those, those stories that have been shared with me have been incredibly touching. And no, I think you captivated all of that. And I think you, your film is, is, like, is like going to therapy. It's, it's making you feel like you're less alone or you're, you know, mm. you know, there's nothing about you that's strange or anything. You're just right. going through what you're going through, experiencing what you're experiencing. And I think we can't ever lose, if, if something is invisible, it doesn't mean we're not going through something, you know? Mm. And I think one of the other teachings you've got as well is just that, you know, I think sometimes we could be too quick to judge about what one's going through, maybe how someone reacts to us and it's a little bit strange. Maybe, you know, I always try to have patience just in those moments mm. where there might be an energy shift or change that, mm -hmm. hey, maybe that person's going for something, or maybe I'm going for something, and I take a beat, or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, so I love how you just kind of articulate that it's okay to not be okay. Sure. Um, and you know, I think one of the nice things as well is that you kind of brought this journey into a moment of time between these characters, mm. but it wasn't like you came to a climax of an, of an ending. It was just a continuation of, a, of a, the next moment. It could be another film next. I mean, you know, sure. it really could. Was that intentional? It's just how you didn't want to. Yeah. It wasn't Holly. It wasn't that classic Holly. Then, oh, I can sit back and relax. It's like you left us open, which was beautiful. No, absolutely. I think that um, I think David Fincher or something. I saw an interview recently where he was talking about. We tell all his writers that he works with to whenever you're writing a scene to make sure that both people in the scene are right. Mm. You know, when you're having an argument, and then that's the best drama, right? 
True. And I think that so many Hollywood films sort of take the cliche and they kind of like set up the villain or they set up, I wanted no villains or anything. Mm -hmm. I wanted this to be true to life and I wanted, um, as, as things were evolving with all of these characters, to sort of have everybody's points of view really yeah. fully fleshed out in a scene. Yeah. And so, you know, posing more questions with this film versus providing answers. And Absolutely. Just, um, and allowing people to see both the sufferer or the people around them and being like, I can relate to all of this and not to have anybody be good or bad and just sort of have it be very true to just what it is. Yeah. Um, and so I think that by not having a, like you said, quote unquote ending, um, even though there is, I, I think, closure to yeah, the film. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yes, I think that was an intention in terms of the writing process and yeah. in terms of the filmmaking was to sort of just be like, this is a slice of life film. So we're yes. picking up at one moment in this person's life and this person's life is going to continue and we're just kind of with them for this period of time. Absolutely, and it was, yeah, beautiful ending. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got to watch, you haven't seen it, so otherwise you never <laughs> know. Um, what's next for you? Um, what's next for me? Uh, I have a film called Just Never Leave that, um, um, gearing up to go I'm um, in development on but Amazing. hopefully by end of year and that's a film that shoots in Argentina and uh, is a bit of a it's about an expat American patriot or expat American punk rocker who's down in Buenos Aires and gets involved in this relationship with a trans woman and uh, it has some noir elements and has to start pulling some crime jobs and um, yeah it's so that's next. I'm ready for it. I'm yeah. ready for it. When you Me shoot too. it, when are you gonna, when are you gonna go and shoot on there? Do you know? Um, we're hoping to shoot by uh, this fall. So their spring, because uh, seasons are flipped. So Amazing. hopefully getting down there by you know, September or October. Very exciting. Yes. Well, a big thank you to you and all of your cast and crew and production. Thank you so much, Dean, for bringing this very, very important film to us and sharing something so personal to you. Um, Puro, thank you very much, Dylan. Appreciate thank you, Danny, for having thank us you. again. This has been an amazing experience with your festival. Thank you very much, Dylan, everybody. Thank you.